Greetings, and welcome to this brief introduction to Plato's dialogue, The Philebus. Plato's Philebus begins in the middle of a conversation. The handsome young Philebus has been arguing that pleasure is good. Our contention, Socrates says, is that thinking is good. It seems that the argument was about to end when a young fellow named Protarchus takes up Philebus's position. The dialogue that we behold has three main parts. In the first, Socrates tries to get Protarchus to agree that some pleasures are not good, but rather bad. Socrates argues that pleasures come in many types, sometimes opposed to one another. But Protarchus says, they're all pleasure, hence they're good. Then Socrates gives Protarchus the choice of a life of pleasure without thinking, like an oyster, or a life of thinking without pleasure. Protarchus affirms that neither would be a truly happy life in his view. More preferable would be a life mixed of the two. Certainly sounds reasonable. But then Socrates asks, which one, pleasure or mind, wins second place? This question marks the beginning of the second and largest part of the dialogue. In this part, Socrates classifies the pleasures. Some are restorative, such as the pleasure of eating when you're hungry. Some are anticipatory, such as when you're looking forward to eating when you're hungry. Socrates makes a long argument that some pleasures are false because they are mixed up with emotions, such as hope or love, which in turn depend on imagination, which can be true or false. In contrast to the false pleasures, Socrates says that there are other pure or unmixed pleasures. They arise from the perception of simple shapes, colors, and smells. So then, how do we mix pleasure and thought in the best life? That question initiates the third and final part of the dialogue. Protarchus agrees that the best life should include all forms of thinking, theoretical and practical. As for pleasure, in a mock dialogue within the dialogue, the pleasures themselves recommend leaving out the crazy sorts and admitting only the true, simple, and useful pleasures. This conclusion leads Socrates and Protarchus to rank the elements in the best life. Measure, they say, is tops. Second is proportion and beauty. Third are intellect and prudence. Fourth are knowledge, art, and true opinion. Fifth are the pure, necessary, and harmless pleasures. So, intellect is nearer the top than pleasure, which is exactly fifth best. The dialogue ends with Protarchus is saying that more remains to discuss. Well, what are we to make of the Philebus? As you can tell from its beginning and ending in the middle of a conversation, the Philebus is strikingly incomplete. Plato underscores this point by naming it for an interlocutor who barely speaks. Some commentators even suggest that Philebus fell asleep in the middle of the dialogue. But the Philebus is incomplete in deeper ways, too. It is a dialogue about pleasure, but the characters never ask, much less answer, the basic question, what is pleasure? In addition, it is one of the few dialogues that takes up the question, what is the best life? But the answer, a life mixed of thought and pleasure, seems pat and unhelpful. Worse, in taking up that question, the characters never consider the most obvious answer, a moral life, doing what's right, which often requires hard choices to forego pleasure or endure pain. With this realization, I think we come somewhat closer to making sense out of this strange dialogue. Pleasure is desirable, and yet for most of us, it first comes to light as what's forbidden, as what's against the law, or as what we must sacrifice in order to do what's right, not as a goddess, but as a temptress. But Protarchus never examines or even considers this side of pleasure. Why not? Is it because he believes that morality, with its thou shalt and its thou shalt nots, is all bunk? No, I don't think so. Protarchus says that he believes that good men live in good hope for good things from good gods. Their pleasures are good. He believes in morality and the goodness of pleasure, a pleasure that aligns with morality. This belief is what Socrates underscores at the end of the dialogue. For a fellow like Protarchus, this morality, measure, proportion, and beauty, comes first. It's the top. Prudence, intelligence, 
the steering of this beautiful whole, the activity of the cosmic mind, those come next, and then knowledge, art, and true opinion. Only then, in fifth place, does Protarchus permit pleasure, the true pleasures, the necessary pleasures, those that accord with the cosmic order. Far from being an enemy to thinking, Protarchus ranks it higher than pleasure in the scale of goods. But both are subservient to the measure, the proportional, and the beautiful. So, in the Philebus, Socrates offers an analysis of a certain type of moralist who claims to honor pleasure, but who honors a beautiful cosmic order even higher. In response, Socrates defends the simple pleasures, which the moralist might have otherwise looked down his nose at, not to mention the profound questions which the moralist thought he had already answered. Thank you for joining this brief introduction to Plato's dialogue, the Philebus.